Welcome to Evening Prayer from the Parish of St. Leonard's Glapthorne on the eighth Sunday after Trinity. As we saw last week, Ecclesiasticus, meaning the Church's book, is not to be confused with Ecclesiastes. It seems to have been written in the first quarter of the second century BC by a Jerusalem teacher, usually referred to as Ben Sira. Its central theme is wisdom, and in this, arguably, it marks a notable development in Jewish thinking, since the expression of hundreds of detailed laws, especially in Deuteronomy. In chapter 24 of Ecclesiastes, wisdom is both personified and presented as identical with the law. This provokes the fascinating question of whether this is akin to the depiction in John's Gospel of Jesus as the personification of the word, or logos, the divine rationality of the heart of creation. Today's reading sets the scene for extolling the value of scholars, such as Ben Syra himself, as interpreters of the law. While paying due respect to the practical importance of those engaged in crafts and trade, the condescending tone leaves the reader in no doubt but that Ben Syra considers the work of the scribes to be on a different, higher level. The New Testament lesson is Luke's account of the Lord's Prayer, followed by a rather enigmatic parable. Matthew's setting is the Sermon on the Mount, and his version is significantly longer. Luke, on the other hand, has Jesus answering a request from an unnamed disciple to be taught how to pray as John the Baptist taught his followers. Jesus is terse and prescriptive, these few words are the irreducible minimum. Few though they are, they raise deep and difficult questions about meaning. In this brief introduction, I can only provide some pointers. For further reflection, one or more good commentaries might help. There is controversy about whether primarily the prayer is about the future or the immediate and quotidian. One way of understanding it is that it's both and that this is to be expected of prayer concern, concerned with the relationship between the world of time and space and the immaterial realm beyond time. The address Father may be abrupt, but it also suggests intimacy. However, that it's the equivalent of Daddy, as is sometimes said, is dismissed by one distinguished commentator as modern sentimentalising. The word name carries with it the idea of God's very nature, and hallowed conveys the desire for that nature to be acknowledged and given effect in the world. There is a strongly eschatological sense in your kingdom come, anticipating the end time, looking to the future. But the idea of orderly chronology is disrupted by what follows in the reference to daily bread. This is much debated. It can be understood as spiritual, essential, for today or for tomorrow. It could mean literally a request for physical nourishment or to be a reference to the Eucharist. It might be an allusion to the story in Genesis chapter 16 of manna in the wilderness, understood symbolically by Jews as standing for their confidence in God's continuing provision for them. It could be seen as asking for a foretaste of the heavenly banquet at the end of time, when Christ has returned in judgment. This leads on to the next petitions to do with forgiveness and not being brought to the time of trial. It may be that we should not see divine forgiveness of us as conditional upon our forgiveness of others, but rather to understand that we forgive those with whom our relationship has been damaged, in order to conform ourselves to the nature of God in his forgiveness of us. The time of trial is especially difficult. It may derive from the idea of a test as a precursor to the coming of God's kingdom, and that this is part and parcel of asking to be rescued from the evil one, the devil, who was expected to make his final desperate onslaught at the very brink of God's new creation. The parable which follows encourages persistence. The last sentence suggests that this applies to prayers for the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
evening prayer. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as you have present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice, unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verses 24 to 34. The wisdom of the scribe depends on the opportunity of leisure. Only the one who has little business can become wise. How can one become wise who handles the plough, and who glories in the shaft of a goad, who drives oxen and is occupied with their work, and whose talk is about bulls? He sets his heart on ploughing furrows, and he's careful about fodder for the heifers. So it is with every artisan and master artisan who labours by night as well as by day. Those who cut the signets of seals, each is diligent in making a great variety. They set their heart on painting a lifelike image, and they are careful to finish their work. So it is with the smith, sitting by the anvil intent on his ironwork. The breath of the fire melts his flesh, and he struggles with the heat of the furnace. The sound of the hammer deafens his ears, and his eyes are on the pattern of the object. He sets his heart on finishing his handiwork, and he is careful to complete its decoration. So it is with the potter, sitting at his work, and turning the wheel with his feet. He is always deeply concerned over his products, and he produces them in quantity. He moulds the clay with his arm and makes it pliable with his feet. He sets his heart on finishing the glazing, and he takes care in firing the kiln. All these rely on their hands, and all are skilful in their own work. Without them no city can be inhabited, 
and wherever they live they will not go hungry. Yet they are not sought out for the counsel of the people, nor do they attain eminence in the public assembly. They don't sit in the judge's seat, nor do they understand the decisions of the courts. They can't expound discipline or judgment, and they're not found among the rulers. But they maintain the fabric of the world, and their concern is for the exercise of their trade. How different the one who devotes himself to the study of the law of the Most High. Here endeth the Old Testament lesson. The Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts, he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he'd finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Don't bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here endeth the New Testament lesson. The Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Collect for the Eighth Sunday After Trinity O God, whose never-failing providence ordereth all things, both in heaven and on earth, we humbly beseech thee to put away from us all hurtful things, and to give us those things which be profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Peace God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. The Collect for Aid Against All Perils Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now a time of private prayer, when we can bring before God anything that we're worried about, those things for which we should be thankful. Anyone known to us who especially needs our prayers, and not forgetting to pray for ourselves. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>